Hey guys, today on Inside the Gearbox, we will be taking a look at motors and the components that make up motors. So, yet again, technically not inside the gearbox, but oh well. First off, I will inform you that this video will not explain how to take apart motors. That will be another video, as there are many different motors, which means that there are many different takedowns. Okay, before we get into the motor, we'll explain parts on the outside. The first part we want to recognize is the motor can. The motor can is the body of the motor, comparable to the human's chest cavity. It contains the vital components of a motor. This motor can is an off-white color, as you can see. Next, we take a look at the end bell. The end bell is essentially the lid on top of the can that holds the motor together. The end bell contains the brushes, the brush springs, the rear of the armature, and the armature bearing. This one is a cream color and has screws that hold it to lock inside the can. Most stock motors do not have this nifty feature, however. Next up, the pinion gear. This is the first gear in your gear train, and it is the smallest. Duh. This one is an O-type, but some are D-types. Technically, O-types are better due to, the, due to their ability of handling stress better than a D-type, but this is negligible for our airsoft applications. In addition, O-type pinions require a special tool to remove them and replace them. D-types do not require this tool. Right below the pinion is the tower. The tower contains the armature bearings and just serves as support for the armature, for the most part. Now that we've covered the outside components, let's dissect this baby. I have arranged the internal components in just some random way, and we'll go from left to right. First thing, the armature. The armature is the heart of the motor. It's green and cylindrical as you can see. In addition, it has wraps of wire around each arm. There are three arms for each airsoft motor armature. It varies per motor though. My dad's truck fan motor has five and some motors have 25. This armature is a standard one. That is, the arms are not beveled. They are straight. Lonex motors have beveled armatures. The pits drilled out of the armature are there to balance it so that each arm weighs the same. The wires wrapped around the armature carry electricity. Duh. The amount of wire wrapped around each arm is called TPA. TPA means turns per armature. This is a 16 TPA armature, which is considered balance. High torque sl slow motors have higher TPA, 22 and up, and lower torque speed motors have lower TPA, minus 18, 18 and below. Generally speaking, TPA is the biggest speed slash torque determining factor. In the can, left and right of the armature are the magnets. Without the magnets, the electric motor would not work. These magnets are neodymium magnets, that is, they are rare earth magnets. They are very powerful. Most stock motors come with ferrous magnets that are weak and unsuitable for stressful setups. Never buy an upgrade motor that has ferrous magnets or thin neo magnets. ICS is the only company I know of that has thin neo magnets. On top of the armature is the commutator, where the, where the electricity from your battery flows into the wires on the armature. This motor has three contact points on the commutator. All airsoft motors have three points, but other motors have more. Above the commutator is the end bell, which houses the brushes. The brushes act as a bridge for electricity between your motor contacts on your wire harness to the commutator on the armature. Some motors have vertical brushes, others have horizontal. These brushes are horizontal. Well guys, that's about all there is to motors. Keep in mind this is a brushed DC motor. They're quite old and outdated. New motors are brushless, however, as of now, they aren't quite practical for airsoft applications. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe for more Inside the Gearbox.